So uh, maybe just mind where you put your phone this episode. Have done. Have that done. Beautiful. Took heed of your uh, message. Well, and, it, and it was the standard kind of old 90s. Kind yeah, of... that like. <laughs> yeah, that weird sound. It's happened like it happened a little a couple episodes ago and last episode. And nobody's mentioned it except then Dan did. He was like, hey, there's like a lot of interference in this. I was like, oh, maybe I missed some of it when I was editing then. Um, so, yeah, it's weird, though, because it's like a sound I have not heard <laughs> in like yeah. a decade. Um and so, you know, I was like just Googling around trying to figure out like, why would this happen? And it seems to be the same thing. I just don't know why it would do that all of a sudden. No, do I. Yeah, but my I've, only I've, thought uh, is just maybe you put your phone down next to the mic. Which I mean, I usually might have do. Done, yeah. You know? <laughs> like, but not, but again, yeah, not, not any more than usual over the past four years, you know? Yeah. We'll see what, we'll see what happens. See if that, if just consciously I think I've recorded away every it. episode bar like three from right here <laughs> yeah in the exact same exact position. configuration yeah. <laughs> yeah that's why it's so weird that it came out of nowhere I'm like maybe maybe like your neighbors got a new piece of technology that does something I don't know but I figure our first uh, step is see if moving the phone does anything and then if it's still doing it then yeah I don't know. We investigate further. Set fire to my neighbor's house. So, obviously. That's that too. <laughs> yes, clearly. Which I guess would be problematic because, like, your house is connected, right? It's a semi, yes. Yeah, so it's connected on one a side. Semi. Yes. This comes up in like Welsh Duolingo, but I don't know what a semi detached house or whatever is. Okay. 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 So. If you've got a house on both sides, uh -huh. like attached to your house on both sides, it's not detached at all. Okay. If you have a house on one side, but not the other, it's semi-detached. Ah. Uh, and if you have none houses on either side of you, Just FYI, in case you were wondering. Excellent. <laughs> your house, for example, your beautiful new house is detached. Yes. Just regular old house. As <laughs> lots of... You've got a tan. You've tanned somehow. I've walked a ton in the sun. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a, I'm more of a natural hue for a woman of my ethnic background. Now. Fair enough, fair enough. So do you like, do you call a house like detached if it's just by itself or you just call it like a yes. house? You no, that's a detached. detached house because because the norm is to live in a house on a street. Which we use different <laughs> words for naturally. <laughs> yes, like of course, detached, everything's on a street. That <laughs> a detached house is is generally a sign of some wealth. Right, gotcha. Yeah, where a house that's attached to others is you is like either it's like an apartment situation and it's less money, or it just means you you like live in a city. Yeah, and the word has occurred to me now. Uh, if your house is not detached, it's terraced. That's what terraced means? Yeah, it's got a house either side. Oh. Your face. <laughs> That's not at all what I thought that it meant. <laughs> it is incredible. I have just learned something totally new today. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. You've just Any made like... Tell you that. All of my all of my Welsh lessons makes because this is the funny thing about like taking Welsh is that it's like I learn words that I don't actually understand the English yes. equivalent of because it's yes, a thing we yes, just simply yes. don't have. Yeah, <laughs> it's like like a a couple of weeks ago, uh, sponken means squash. I don't know what squash is, like the game, like not the, the drink. drink. No, I know what the drink is now. I've, uh, oh, this is the game. The game. The of game of squash. And so it was like we had to identify there was like a picture of someone. It was like it has their name, uh, what verb you're supposed to use or like whatever. Or like it's just like their name and then a picture of them doing something. And you're supposed to say what they're doing. And I was looking at the picture and she's waiting for me. And I was like, I literally have no idea what that person is doing. <laughs> and it's like, oh, they're playing squash. I was like, excuse me? They're, what they're playing what? That's not uh, a thing. Uh, squash was like a a global kind of very popular racket sport. No. 
I feel like maybe it might have been at some point in the past. I don't know. Because I said to like, I was like, I think we'd just call it racquetball. And then this guy who's like 70 in the class was like, no, I think it's a different sport. And he's American. And I was like, okay, well, he's heard of it, but he's ancient. So maybe yeah, at one Olymp- point. It's an Olympic it sport, Corey. Yeah. It's squash There's is There's a big, lot of stuff game. that are Olympic sports, buddy. <laughs> like that thing I... where they push a, a rock around on the ice or whatever. Like that doesn't mean you've ever seen someone do it. <laughs> <laughs> There's also, love... that's curling. Yes. Isn't there also one called hurling? What's that? Hurling is hurling is very different to curling. How would I know? I've never seen anyone do any of these things. Know, There's like sports know. that appear during the Olympics and then you just like never hear of them again. That's like they only exist once every four yeah, years. Yeah, hurling is hurling is is Gaelic, but okay. hurling is a game where you're on a fucking field and you've got a little bat. Okay. On a Um, yeah let me just can i just share my screen hurling will come as a big surprise to you (laughs) i'm kind of excited here Uh, it's got to be a way i can make this like this all the time but okay you should be able to share now okay so this is hurling um Oh, hello, family. That that one is hurling. Uh... So you're running around the field and you've got like a big spoon with a ball in it. Is it like lacrosse without a net? I think it might be, yeah. So you like hold it on there, like what that game where you have to like try to ping exactly. pong a ball on Exactly, a... and you're running with it. But That's like big hurling. sized. But to, And to pass it, you've got to fucking eat it from your spoon to someone else's spoon. Well, sure. Hurling. That makes sense. It makes a lot more sense yeah. than curling. Yeah. Whereas curling is the, is the good one. That's the one with the. This seems know, a lot cooler young... than that. It it seems a lot more intense. Yeah. Yeah. But, <laughs> cur- oh. Have you ever, have I ever shown you the most amazing fucking feat of sport I've ever seen? Uh, no. Are you aware of the sport <laughs> Wait, of bowls? Brown bowls? green bowls. Bowls. No. You must have an equivalent for this. So okay. as a bowler, I have like four balls and my opponent has four balls. And we start off by throwing a white ball down the fucking green. Bocce ball. And you've got to get as close to it as you can. Yeah. Yeah. Bocce ball. Balls. Right. Okay. Watch this shit. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to send this to your signal, right? Okay. And what I want you to, to to pay close attention to for me, right, is the guy's face as he <laughs> lets the shot go, right? <laughs> just just as he throws the shot, I want you to just just watch his face. All right. Check this out. About six inches between the two bowls, so there is just room. <laughs> this guy looks like a. The way Craig uh, asked him to play poor like, man's Joe he was three feet away from it. Oh, he does, doesn't he? Yes, he does. <laughs> Call it these guys you wouldn't expect him oh. to miss either, to be honest. Well, he's very close to splitting the two red <laughs> balls and getting to the jack. That's what the target is. <gasps> oh, look at this. <laughs> oh, my oh, that is ridiculous. <laughs> that is just so good. It is ridiculous. As soon as he lets it go, it's like he already knows what he's done just as soon as he lets the fucking ball go. <laughs> That That's was outrageous. <laughs> I love the um, like the crowd goes from like when it's like oh you it could just fit and they all like laugh you know like oh there's absolutely no way and then yeah. when it actually starts drifting towards it they're <gasps> stunned absolutely awesome. <laughs> that it also kind of reminds me of the um. You remember that bowling clip of the guy? What is it that he says? Like, <laughs> who do you uh, think you are? Who do you are, think I you am. are? I am. Yeah. That's what he says. <laughs> That's yes, what I wanted I to see it. this guy do. I who do you think you are? I guy. am. <laughs> I fucking love that guy. That's right. I did it. Who do you think you are? I am. <laughs> <laughs> I've been known to use that. In fact, I've been it's known to so drop that good. from time to time. It's genuinely like one of the most iconic sport <laughs> phrases in the history of time. 
<laughs> so so this is how to get you interested in guy. sports. <laughs> Fascinating. <laughs> like a little bit of belligerence right. and something, some sort of I insane skill. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> oh, so oh good. that was wonderful. Great reference there. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Any day to bring up that day. That guy is a good day. <laughs> um, why were we talking about that? Oh, bowls, <laughs> start- bowling, racquetball, no. squash. It started with Olympics. learning the word detached house in Welsh. That's where this yeah, came yeah, from. It did. It did. <laughs> so, this is this is this is all content. This is all content. It is, yeah. Um, speaking of content, um, if this week I I send you a story, if you could record it and post it. Oh, I'd love that. Yeah, I'll do that That'd tomorrow. Be great. I'll do that tomorrow. Perfect. Okay, I'll find one for you yeah. tonight or while I'm at the airport waiting for my flight. Um, so very... you're coming to DC on your own? No, 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 with Keo. With Keo. <laughs> yeah, meeting yeah, at the yeah. airport. No, 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 no. He's here. We're He's flying there. together to Washington DC because he yes. can't turn down anything. No. Yeah. Exactly. Wow. Yeah. Isn't that bananas? Yeah, that's <laughs> coming from a coming from a, a I can turn shit down. Man. Oh yeah, <laughs> I'm extremely good at good at it. In fact, it like it is one of Keo's favorite things about me, not because of the balance, but because he, the way I turn people down is often just mm. so brash. Like mm. we, someone walked up to us uh, when we were in Philly last year, this like sweet, like 19 year old Jehovah's witness. And he walked up and he was like, uh, Hey, would you be interested in coming to church with me? And I turned, I went, absolutely fucking not. <laughs> <laughs> it uh. was just like, <laughs> like, oh mate come on it's like i'm not i don't swear i don't cuss it at oh, innocent bystanders i absolutely will <laughs> <laughs> like just what are you doing you're interrupting my day here buddy <laughs> like, ah, that's good no way I, I have quite an interesting story that i don't think i've told you but i mentioned deborah tully to you deborah tully i don't think so right fine okay we'll pause that then unless you want it right now do it right now is there a reason not to tell it to me right now Check this out. Okay. So, tangentially linked to what you said, right? Okay. I'm driving home from Bristol the other day. Okay. And uh, I've been driving for ages. And it was getting to the last, like, half an hour of the drive. And my phone goes, and it's a withheld number, right? Okay. Which always means cold caller, which always means scam. You know what I mean? (laughs) And I never usually answer those. But I was super bored. And I thought, well, maybe it'll be like somebody from our bank contact center and I can fuck with them a little bit. And I'm sure. like, you, you know, so I answer the phone. Now, first detail to recall, they ask for me by name. Hello, is that Mark Lewis? Okay. Yes, it is. Who is this? I think I say something similar to, the, to, to that <laughs> effect. <laughs> uh, lady on the other end, British, okay. non-computer generated, okay. sounded like a lady speaking into a phone. Right. Okay. Hiya, it's it's quite urgent. We're looking to get hold of Deborah Tully. Could you put her on, please? Could you could you pass the phone over to Deborah Tully? Uh, sorry, I've never heard that name before in my life. She goes, <laughs> okay, fine. Sorry, then bye. Okay, bye. All right. Okay. Fast forward later that night. It's about nine p.m. Phone goes with her number. I'm like, don't normally get him this late. What's going on? Answer the phone. Hi, is that Mark Lewis? Yes, yes, it is. Hi, uh, Mark. We're really, really trying to get hold of Deborah Tully. Can you? Can you? <laughs> You're getting you the strangers. In... Is Tamra there? Right, twice, and I say to them again. Look, I, this is the second time you've you've called me today. I've never heard the name Deborah Tully before in my life. That's literally what I say. Because oh, I'm really sorry. Okay, I'll I'll take you off our notes here. Sorry, sorry. All the best. Good night. Uh-huh. Fast forward ten minutes. Okay. I get a text message, which I'm going to read to you. Okay. I message for Deborah. Could you please get in contact ASAP? We are from the mental health team at HRI and have been trying to contact you. HRI is Huddersfield Royal Infirmary, a hospital in the north of England. I know where Huddersfield is. We are from the mental health team at Huddersfield Royal Infirmary and have been trying to contact you. I ring the number on this text straight away. Hi, this is Mark Lewis. As soon as I say Mark Lewis, they go, oh, shit, really sorry. We'll take you <laughs> off. 
right? Okay. So, and that was the end of it. So what happened here by the look of it is Deborah Tully, who I've never fucking met or heard of in my life, in all of my days, mm-hmm. not only as her like next of kin, has given my name, but also my number. Your number, yeah. That's weird. They asked for me by name. Did you Google her or anything? I did. Nothing at all. Nothing. Nothing. Nothing that sticks out at all. Huh. Yeah, because that's so weird. Because it feels like I mean, unless this is like some sort of very sophisticated scam, but like everything about that feels like it's like a real person. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. And I and rang the number back like, on the text and got the same woman. Who yeah, I got the same person. Earlier. And like that it would be your name and number. Like, because it'd be like, oh, if it was just like a Mark Lewis. Yes, 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 yes. And plus, I'm not in any directories, particularly not with that number. Right. Yeah, that's bizarre. Work that one out. Yeah. And what's going on with Deborah? Mm. I'm concerned for her. Well, so, well, yeah, particularly if, you know, if a hospital is badly trying to get hold of you, yeah, it, it's never to kind of give you a treat, is it? Or right, but it's a mental institution. But it's a mental, uh, uh, or at least she's in the mental health care, right? Because, huh? Yeah, and like, does she work there? Because obviously, she's not the one who's supposed to be in the institution, right? I don't see why not. Is she a patient well, who's gone AWOL? Has she? I guess it just. Feels like because they didn't say like, um, hey, you're Mark Lewis. Do you have any idea of the whereabouts of Deborah Tully? They said, could yeah, you to speak to her? They're asking to speak to her. Like they think some like that doesn't sound like that's abnormal. It's like someone she knows maybe is in the institution or she works in the institution. I don't know. And it's like there's no like logic to the whole situation. No. But please. The way I've related to you there is exactly how it happened. Like, bizarre. Exa- almost verbatim what I said as well on these calls. That's fascinating. Mm-hmm. I would, I Owen would be was down with me such when, a rabbit hole. When the second call and when the text came in, Owen, one of them, Owen or Peter, was sat right there. <laughs> Incredible. It's so stuff. weird. Uh-huh. I want to know more. Be like texting mm. back, like, like, just like, could you give me an update <laughs> when you find her? <laughs> Can you give me a little something about this Deborah Tully? I know I said I don't know her, but I actually, I just want to, like, can you tell me if she's <laughs> all right? What if I did? Yeah. <laughs> just need some, you know, closure to this situation. Deborah Tully Huddersfield. Yeah. Hmm. Deborah Potts. Deborah Tully. Does she Kevin even Tully. exist? Mm, very interesting stuff. Like, that's you know how there's like the scams now where yep. like they'll act like you know you've been kidnapped or whatever they'll call your loved one and be in like pretend yeah, they have I, someone screaming in the background or something like know, that you know i actually had one of these the other day as well and i tried to keep them, keep them talking oh no for real um started uh half three on sunday hi mum save this number Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I replied, okay, love. <laughs> <laughs> Scammer, where are you right now? You busy? I say, no, love, I'm just making lunch. You okay? <laughs> <laughs> yes, thanks. If you've got a moment, I need a favor. Uh, me and Laura are talking about this by this point. So I say, I thought you were on your way here. The chicken is in the oven. <laughs> nice. Um, not yet. I've got something to pay for today, but I can't get into my online banking. Can you please do me a favor and pay uh, for me? There you know what is. I mean? That's how that one goes. Yeah, um, I usually get the like standard someone goes like, hey, I'm in town or whatever. And then it's like eventually, you know, they're like, oh, you say sorry, wrong number, whatever. And then they're like, oh, yes. haha, well, you know, do you live around here? What are you up yeah, to? Yeah, sure, like, sure, sure, you know, sure, sure. And I've known yeah. so many guys who claim like, oh, I totally knew it was a bot or whatever. But they like, I just wanted to see. And like, you know, until yeah. it like sends them a picture and all that kind of stuff. I'm like, you are hoping for yep. a random hookup, don't uh, all don't day lie. Long. You, all this day is long. how they get you because men will go on with it because they're yes. like, maybe, maybe I'm gonna what get a you're nude. Describing there, I believe in scam terms is known as a pig butchering scam. Pig butchering. Yes. Um. 
I I get them often as well. The ones I get generally tend to come through WhatsApp. Okay. They will always begin with something innocuous, like a case mm-hmm. of mistaken identity. Like, Hi, Deborah, did you leave the photocopying on the machine like I asked? Right. Call you later. And then I'll reply with, sorry, who? I don't know who you are. Oh, well, you seem like a nice person. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And then it'll... Yeah. Uh, and then by all accounts, if you stay on the phone with them for a couple of days texting, they'll tell you to invest in crypto. <laughs> uh, and there is, yep. you know, a completely different app that you've never heard of, which doesn't exist. You'll see tiny returns until you invest more and more and more and more. And then they they vanish. Pig butchering, that's what it's called. Now, Keo got like a weird one when we were in Spain and it was mm. like our anniversary and he got one. And this has happened to other people at his work. In fact, it happened the same night, but it's huh. happened since too. But he gets this message like from a guy he works with, this guy, Jay O'Connor. And he's like, oh, Jay messaged me and and he's, you know, asking like where I'm at or whatever. Um, and so he's like talking to him and he's like, hey, you know, uh, like I really need a favor and all this kind of stuff. Like these things fell through, blah, blah, blah. And yeah, like, yeah, yeah. um, and then he asks him a scam that I think we've all heard before. The like, you know, I, I need these gift cards. Um, <laughs> yeah. So can you yeah. do this? And then Keo was like, then he's like, what? That, that sounds kind of weird. And so he asked him, hey, what's our uh, per diem on this show? And uh, like the guy like didn't have an answer or like answered wrong or something like that. And Kate was like, okay, yeah, mm. this is definitely a scam. But one of his coworkers bought like did it. He bought the gift oh. cards and, you know, was out this money um, as a result of it because it came from like when Keo then went back and looked at the email address, like it was like, it wasn't, it wasn't quite right. It wasn't like a spoofed thing, but it was like one letter off or something like that. Oh yeah, that, of you course, know? like, a, like a, 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 a capital I instead of an L. Yeah, exactly. One of those kinds fucks. of things. And it's like, mm. but it's wild because it's like, how do they, like, they target a workplace like this mm. and, you know, they know who Keo is and who Jay is and these kinds of things to be able to like See, work with gift cards. That. Gift cards have been the currency of choice for scammers Mm -hmm. for decades, Yeah, right? And even though I consider myself quite dialed in, you know, (laughs) yeah, I've never quite understood how somebody else in a different country, potentially, Mm -hmm. what's the exit strategy with gift cards then? How do you convert gift cards into cash? I think you just sell them. Is it really that? Yes. Yeah, that I think rudimentary. it's. I think it's that rudimentary. You buy it's, it's someone ever, buys a hundred dollar iTunes. It's only ever particular types of gift card as well. I couldn't buy like Argos gift cards. They've right. got to be like Apple specifically. It's always Apple. Yeah, it's always yeah, iTunes yeah, yeah. gift cards that you end up asked for. Yeah, I assume it's that they're easy to to sell. You could sell them like discounted or whatever. Oh, seventy five dollars for a hundred dollar mm, iTunes thing that, or whatever. I was looking for something more intricate. I was looking <laughs> right, for something yeah. a bit more. Yeah, I don't think it's you know, that complicated. More Ocean's 12 Yeah. <laughs> no, I think they just scam you into buying something and then they sell it. And Disappointing. You know. I know. Nobody's got any creativity anymore. No, they don't. Um, hopefully, Deborah Tully, however and wherever she is, I hope she's engaged in creative, fruitful <laughs> pursuits and is here, well here. and stick into her med. Completely. Mm-hmm. Should we dive in? Do you think? Just go from. I thought we where... had. Yeah, I assume we had. Um, yeah. On the note, uh, today, Mark, on this year' podcast, Hello. we are taking it easy because it is a holiday in both of our. It's a holiday, as you quite rightly said. I don't think anyone's listening anyway. <laughs> yeah, this is. I can like when it comes to like holiday times, whether it's Christmas yeah. or Memorial Day or the Fourth of July or whatever else. There's mm. always like a drop where it's like nobody has time for this. Nobody like everyone's got family shit going on or they're yes. hungover or whatever the case may be. Um, and so we figured we'd like take it easy, low stakes, nothing that anyone's gonna feel a lot of pressure to listen yeah. to, uh, and just chill and talk about some stuff. That we that. have watched because I think we both got quite a few things in this week. We did. Uh, I pounded some in this week. Yeah, which as, is beautiful. Uh, yes, as uh, both of my kids are away separately, and 
uh, Laura nicked off for a couple of days with Owen. So I thought, fuck it, let's go absolutely ham on the Beautiful. movies. And I squeezed in so many. And what I'm quite looking forward to is there's one movie that I squeezed in that you don't know about. <laughs> I, I don't know about. I haven't put on yet. Yeah. And I'm going to, you've got a 20 questions. It. You must. This is very funny. I don't know movie. what got into you with this, but I'm excited <laughs> to to give it a whirl. I've been thinking about questions for the past two days or whatever to, yes. to be able to guess you will what not, movie it is. You won't get it. Well, anyway, hey, we'll the, we'll you know see, what? We'll the see. other day. If you do. What were we watching? What? There's a movie. Oh, the, so we're watching Ministry of Ungentlemanly, Ungentlemanly Warfare a couple of weeks ago, right? Um, and I think I've mentioned before that Keo is convinced that I'm what's called a super recognizer. We discussed this before, yes. right? So, yeah. you know, uh, I can pick people out as having seen them before pretty much anywhere, even if I don't necessarily remember where from. I mm. don't really forget a face. Um, mm. And so as a result of this, I'm usually like one of my little weird spiritual gifts is if I'm like watching something and someone looks like somebody else, um, yeah. I can be like, that person looks like the halfway point between these two people, you know, <laughs> next like that. Like I can pick the features out and stuff like that of people like that. Um, but so we're watching Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare and I'm like, look at the guy playing Winston Churchill. And it's like, it doesn't look like anybody, really. You know, it certainly yeah. doesn't look like Churchill either. But, you know, it was like one of those things kind of like, you know, Colin Farrell as the penguin kind of like, yeah, you're like, Who, yeah, yeah. who's in there? Um, but Keo looks it up and he's like, you would never in a million years guess who this is. Uh, and in my brain, I'm just going, it's Rory Kinnear. And he goes, it's Rory Kinnear. And I was like, it was. I knew that was who it was. Good I'm like, shit. I can't pick out exactly why, but my brain knew something in there was Rory Kinnear. <laughs> it is an excellent skill. It is it a is, really good skill to have. It's an excellent little skill to have. Um, I want to say on a movie note, since we're in movie zone here, yes, a, a little sort of like update situation. Okay, we um talked a few weeks ago as well maybe around the same time as the ministry of ungentlemen warfare um about my adventure going to see richard dreyfus uh oh, and yeah, how yeah, yeah, completely yeah, 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 yeah. unhinged that was if you have not listened i believe uh it was episode 181 uh and there's a timestamp in the description and you can hear me recount the three-hour hostage situation that was <laughs> seeing um <laughs> richard dreyfus at bergen pack in New Jersey. Um, but a couple days ago, um, John Latour texts me and uh, he's, you know, he asks me about like, when you saw Richard Dreyfus, did they do the movie first and then the Q&A or the Q&A and then the movie? And I was like, well, they did the movie, movie and then the Q&A. And he was like, oh, OK, yeah, they did the Q&A and then the movie here. And that seems to have reined him in, you know, an hour of Q&A, right. all that kind of stuff. Um, and so he was it's like, drinking. you know, not on stage, but okay. yeah, let me, I will address that in a second. <laughs> but so like, he didn't mention anything crazy. It was like, it was definitely like rambling old man shit, you know, or whatever. Um, But like nothing crazy he seemed pretty reined in or, and all yeah. that. Um, They still had the same weird, like videos that they played that had like barely anything to do yeah, with the topic. Yeah, 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 Same yeah, yeah. old lady moderating who also is in space, all that stuff. But it was like reined in when he saw him. Apparently, the next day, Dreyfus goes to somewhere in mass. So for whatever reason, I'm not sure why, maybe just because it was the half halfway point between they were meeting Rob um, between where they lived, but they went to New Hampshire. The next day, he goes somewhere in mass and this has blown up on the interwebs because here we got to see full Richard Dreyfus in all of his unhinged glory. Uh, now, when I saw him, one of the things that I was like, you know, for all the rambling here and everything, he is making zero sense. So like at times yeah, yeah, I yeah. thought he was going to start branching into like weird going political into, stuff yeah, yeah, that yeah. was going to be like really fucked up. Eastwood. <laughs> right yeah and I was like this is gonna get so bad but then he couldn't make like a coherent thought enough to like actually say uh -huh. anything particularly offensive uh but apparently he figured it out when he went to this one in Massachusetts where he came out on stage in a dress 
Is it um, trans kids? I bet it's trans kids, isn't it? It's trans kids for sure. Yay, it came out in, in <laughs> like, what's an unhinged boomer going to come out and talk about? <laughs> came out in a dress, which apparently he tried to take off himself. And then according to Reddit, uh, two like stage hands had to help him out of, uh, which is just like deeply weird. Um, and people were like, I don't know why he did this, like what this bit has to do with anything. They start going through the Q&A. He has this thing about Barbara Streisand. And I thought this was like spontaneous at our thing. But apparently he has a huge fucking grudge about Barbara Streisand that he has mentioned at every single one of these stops. They did a movie together like 37 years ago. <laughs> Christ. You would think a guy would be able to let it go. But this time, you know, he had talked about basically, you know, Barbara Stry Streisand, she's brilliant and all this kind of stuff, but she's like an idiot. And, you know, she's totally not ready to direct a movie or whatever. Like, that's kind of what he talked about <laughs> at ours. He took it one further at this one and talked about how it's a problem with women. Women can't direct movies and women can't lead. That's the problem here. Women are too soft. And they I shouldn't know, be mate. in charge of things, which is a take for sure. Yeah, um, I don't know. And then uh, I'll have to I'll have to think it through. <laughs> yeah, let's you know, I don't make any like rash decisions I'm about what you think of this. No judgment. Great arguments on both sides. <laughs> but <laughs> then, because this is how all transphobes are, they can't like they can't not talk about it completely unconnected to anything he then had to go off about how like 10 year olds shouldn't be able to decide all of a sudden that they can be a boy uh yes. and you know all that stuff and apparently this went so, so poorly because he's in he's in massachusetts which is a yeah. very like i mean you know it has its conservatism all that kind of stuff but like overall like it's a quite liberal state especially in the area he Good. was in um and like the audience started booing and yelling at him and you know telling him he was supposed to be talking about jaws and so he was like oh you're gonna be one of those like ugly audiences huh <laughs> and like people just walked out like apparently like dozens of people straight left wow. people were asking for their money well, back good. Yeah, yeah, yeah right yeah. <laughs> You know, uh, it was just an absolute disaster, unmitigated disaster. So based on the rules, you can still enjoy Jaws, but anything that he is in from yeah. now. Which I don't think is a problem. <laughs> like, exactly, exactly. Like, I think he's recently in a movie with Gina Carano. <laughs> <laughs> so, there was not really like a risk that I was going to be like, damn, I really wanted to see that. But now I found yeah. out he's terrible. Like. Uh, well, they would I think have I'm had good. lots to talk about. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm sure. Boy, that set must have just been mm. so toxic. Just yeah, the yeah. conversations. Oh, rough. Do you but know, yeah. I oh, had ahead. I had such big hopes for Gina Carano. I thought she was going to be. Huge. I know you were like, like when we were watching, uh, what's it called? The first season of Dungeons and Dragons. Mandalorian. She's oh, yeah, yeah, not yeah. in Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> No, she isn't, but that's a I, different I unhinged convinced. woman. <laughs> I remain convinced that had Gina Carano not got the brain worms, oh, she would have yeah, been in Dungeons and Dragons. That. that role was meant yeah. for her, I'm convinced. Yeah, Michelle Rodriguez also has brain worms. Uh, yes. So, yes. you know, that role was going to go to <laughs> some sort of unhinged broad no matter what happened. Yes. Um, but what was I going to say? Um, oh, the drinking thing that you you mentioned. So I was reading other like threads and stuff like that from Reddit and everything. Um, and someone posted a picture with him from like 2019, I think, where he had gone on a similarly bananas rant. And they so they did like the meet and greet for whatever this situation was. I think it was a con. Um, and yeah. literally in the picture, he's like slumped down in his chair with them on either side oh, with the most no. like disgruntled look on his face and Mark full glass of wine in his hand. He couldn't <laughs> put down the wine for a photo op. So like, to be clear, this man is self self described. This is not me assigning anything to him. He is bipolar, uh, right. looks at it as a gift and thus does not medicate, uh, is totally boomer brained and may or may not also have a substance abuse issue so friends if you if you go see richard dreyfus from this point on like you just 
please that's report on back. you please tell us how it goes like everything here is pointing towards chaos um mm. and you need to to lean into that or just avoid it i think is is it is it kind of like a new development in his public persona? Has he long been known as a crank? I think, I mean, definitely for the past several years, he has had crank tendencies. And I mean, here's the thing. So, like, he is, like, deeply mad about the play The Shark is Broken, right? Um, because see, he it. was, like, he felt that, as he described it when I saw him, and someone made the mistake of asking him about it, and I'm like, don't you read before you come here? He has talked at length about how much he hates this play. Uh, but he was like, it made me look childish when I feel that I'm childlike. I'm like, given <laughs> the events that have unfolded over the course of these Q and A's, I think childish is more appropriate. And I see why Robert Shaw hated him and <laughs> other people seem to hate him. I think he's always been like this. It's just like the platform is bigger now that like yeah. social media exists and stuff like that you know okay okay and that it's like but you're not supposed to talk like this now <laughs> you know with jaws being as beloved as it is by so mm -hmm. many there are doubtless so many people walking around with a fucking hooper tattoo right you know <laughs> straight up hooper or hopper hooper matt hooper. hooper yeah yep there you go stop playing but with yourself it's object hooper. lesson Mm -hmm. Then why you never get tattoos of living celebrities? You don't do exactly. It. You you wait until everything that can possibly come out about that everything's person in the books has come out. I'm like, can I get a Jaws tattoo that's just Robert <laughs> Shaw and uh, Roy Scheider? Is that would that yeah. be weird? Can I like turn it into something else? Jaws and Harry Potter. I know, right? Seriously, I mean, there's nothing wrong with Jaws. Like he's. It's a it's no, a shark. Hey, <laughs> he isn't dragging down the brand. He isn't dragging the yeah, brand down at you know, all. Absolutely exactly. Not. But the Harry Potter. Maybe if Spielberg came out as a uh, was outed as as a yeah, this well because that's the thing is that like my like I would love like a Spielberg tattoo like that's like close like encounters and like probably like thigh you know like that kind of situation. But yeah, like close oh. encounters and Jaws and Jurassic Park, like you know, like a cool. Spielberg. Listen, a Spielberg situation. leg sleeve. I right? have like to how, tell you, I don't hate it at all. Right? How fucking cool would that be if done right? I just have to avoid right. the dry fist in all of it. So you've got you've got five movies. You can let's say five. I don't know how big you're gonna go or like what kind of real estate <laughs> there is on your thigh. thigh. I don't know. I you 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 you've got to pick five Spielberg movies for your legs to even go. So Jaws, Close Encounters, Jurassic Park. Uh oh boy, that's well. Uh, I feel like I was kind of going thematically there because then I'm like, I don't know that like other ones necessarily like fit mm. the vibe. I'm not a huge like. I don't really like ET. ET is not my thing. Huh. Uh, and I don't really like Indiana Jones. I can I can imagine you not liking ET that 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 scans. <laughs> yeah, it's just yeah, ew. it's a mix of like being you know being a kid and seeing something like that. I was like, it's very dark and it's very long. It is. So it's yes. two things together. It's like I just remember being very sad watching it more than anything yeah. else. Um, yeah, remember. I don't well. know what else would be like in the vicinity of those kinds of movies because he's made a lot of great movies. I just don't feel like they're all like. Of the like uh, sci-fi or creature, Ready Player One for sure. <laughs> yeah, sure. can you imagine it? Just be um, IP all up and down. <laughs> like, <laughs> every tin tin. I put tin tin in there. Tin. Yeah, I don't know about that. Just depends how there's far too down much the leg racist, you want to go. Really. Yeah, there's too much racist tin tin for a black woman to put a tin tin tattoo. Oh, there is, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah. So we went to sell. when I was in Portugal. We went to like a tin tin store. It had other things, including some very kind of entertaining like 70s porn magazines that they had in there so it was like the it was like tintin on the top uh, shelf and the shelf and then the lower shelf was just boobs uh <laughs> would it be the other way around surely well boobs on the top shelf well it was more of a tintin like place they also had what's that i see what's the um there's like a sci-fi magazine that yeah. and i think it's british and it's been around since like the 70s dialogue no, um, uh, you would absolutely know it if you saw it. But they had tons of that 
in SFX. There. No, 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 no. Um, I feel like it does like sci-fi and horror. Um, ah, I can't think of what the name of it is, but anyway, it was an interesting place. But they had all this Tintin stuff, uh, and it being Portugal and not the U.S. They, it was not necessarily completely without its racism and things like that in it. Yeah, so there yeah, were yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. all these. I, I sent uh, my friend John is like a huge Tintin fan, and I sent him some racist Tintin postcards just for the fun of it. Like, well, oh, found these. You probably probably didn't find those when you went to the Tintin store in London, did you? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, because it's legitimate, it's not propaganda. It's art, right? Exactly. So you can... Just send that. Precisely. <clears throat> so anyways, Richard Dreyfus, crazy. What, uh, why were we talking being... about Agatha Christie recently? Were we? Ten Little Indians was on a bookshelf somewhere oh boy. in the movie that we watched. Was it? I don't remember this. Yeah. Was it me? It was 100% you. <laughs> we were watching a movie and in uh, like a kind of a deep cut visual character note. One of the lead characters had ten little Indians, and then there were none. Familiar. Yeah, I want to say, yeah, I don't think it was ten little Indians, but this does sound vaguely familiar now that you're mentioning it. Mm. We've watched a lot of things lately, so you know, it's yeah, hard to have, keep up with uh, with how many things uh, we might have seen that that would have been in. Uh, we watched Humane. Was it this week? Uh, the loved it, ones. It, it was either this week or last. It wouldn't have been Kong. It wouldn't have been Abigail. Was it Inglorious Bastards? And no, I, I don't know. And I can't remember <laughs> why I wanted. I was think. I think I was talking about kind of race washed reputations mm. of creators. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of Agatha Christie's original stuff is vile. Yeah, yeah. It's like we we are very good at just kind of like pretending mm. those don't exist. Take them off the shelf and just forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> like, mm. it's fine just don't like don't every look. so often whenever kind of roll doll whenever like a roll mm. doll property has has been given a new fucking screen treatment inevitably somebody will post that fucking quote of his from the twits and if you have lovely thoughts they will shine out of your face like <laughs> sunshine and you'll always look pretty or something fucking <laughs> trite and shit like that sure and every, I haven't done it yet, but every time I just want to reply to it with his quote about Nazis uh, and, and Jews, you yeah. know, how, how does that not torpedo your career and your reputation as? Was he not, was he one of, I sometimes get like him and uh, Dr. Seuss confused. I know like Dr. Seuss made a lot of kind of like racist against the Japanese, like cartoons and stuff like that during World War II. But yeah, that rings a bell, did, yeah. I feel like Roald Dahl maybe apologized or acknowledged this stuff later on in life um and i could be wrong again i could this could just be because i'm confusing him with uh dr seuss that doesn't make it okay when people just say oops sorry about that but his, i do feel like his estate with it. have apologized <laughs> i mean his i'll bet you they know, have his, if they want movies his to descendants have apologized yeah yeah, yeah yeah when the fucking netflix checks keep rolling in but right. to my knowledge he oh, never no, apologized he never within his lifetime that. He was just no, no, just no. a regular old anti semite. Yeah, <laughs> cool, 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 cool. I'm... Yeah, it does put in well, and like here's the thing about Roald Dahl stuff too is that like when you read it with like any like uh, everything sort of morality tales in his books, and they're all horrible. <laughs> like every time, if yeah. you actually pay attention to like the message of any one of those stories, it's like Jesus Christ, this is upsetting so he may, I, don't... A, I don't want to disagree it's been a while yeah um as you can imagine but yeah i i, I find i don't find that tough to believe yeah <laughs> like he's uh certainly a standard white british male of a certain age mm. that's for sure <laughs> yeah um one you know his 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 is the soft spot the British culture still has for Roald Dahl, I think is more to do with how he kind of set himself apart at the time of, as being kind of like kids' stories with the breaks off almost, kids' right, stories with yeah, no... Yeah. Uh, they, they spoke to kids as opposed to two kids through adults. Mm -hmm. um, quite anarchic, quite graphic, quite yeah. um, edgy at the time. Uh, and I think that that's that's where his reputation as being so beloved comes from, as opposed to the quality of his stories. I think is the right. fact that they were quite 
in your face. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I remember like when I discovered him when I was in, like fifth grade, like being super into mm. his stuff. It definitely, you know, and a kid isn't overanalyzing the message behind a roll doll. Well, story. exactly. So mm. yeah, I enjoyed him at the time. Now, like when I read things, I'm like, oh, mm. yikes. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, certainly not so good that it would balance out being a, an anti-Semite. No, definitely not. He certainly has not reached you, the level you'd have of to be brilliance a shit. where... You'd have to write the yeah. best kid stories. Yeah, I don't, like... To make up for that. <laughs> exactly. It would Your kid stories would have to, like, solve world hunger for it to, like, balance yeah. out being yeah. anti-Semite, so... Yeah. And I don't think he got there. I don't his, think he did his, that. I don't think he's earned lifetime. that. <laughs> um, <Yeah. clears throat> so should we get into what we did watch this week then? We can do, although at least one or two of these, I don't think we watched the same movie. <laughs> Is that? Well, I'm yeah, okay. We yeah, because we, we watched a few things uh, together. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where do you want to start, do you think? Where indeed? Well, okay, so um, during my, and this was all pretty much on the weekend, I, I got around to All You Need Is Death. Ah, yes. Beautiful. The right? Irish uh, independent horror film, folk horror, horror film from Paul folk Duane. horror. Yeah, 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 yeah. And look, I didn't love it as much as you did. Sure. Um, But it is... A film of several gears. Mm-hmm. It is a film with several different kind of energy states up its sleeve. Right. Um, it is a movie that will swerve you. You know, mm-hmm. what you think you're getting isn't necessarily what you're getting. Right. And I do enjoy that. I do enjoy the old seat being whoop, whoop, whipped out from under me from yeah. time to time. Mark, uh, you know, Mark enjoys that. Um, I it I I suffered from not liking the lead. That's that, totally fair. Yeah. You know, just mm-hmm. simply didn't like the lead. Um, but you know, more we what we do need is more of this kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean that's kind of you like know? I don't think we're that far off in our, our takes on it. Um, I think my thing generally was like I thought it was it was cool and you know, interesting and yes, all that kind yes. of stuff. It's not like my favorite movie I've ever seen, but I also was like, mm. the swings, they are big. <laughs> You know, yes. the budget is small and the swings are big. And I think it's really effective at what it's doing with, you know, what it has. And yeah, it's something that I would like to see more of. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, quite above and beyond anything that ends up on screen. It's it's a new idea. It, it's right. not a, a con, you yes. know, like a plot I've never ever fucking heard of before. Exactly. So for nothing else. Uh, it gets a big Marco thumbs up for that. Um, yeah. So I still encourage everyone to watch All You Need Is Death and actually pay for it. Don't steal it. Yes, and I'm delighted to report that that's exactly what I did. <laughs> Which is a beautiful Got thing. But £4.50 of my money off Apple TV. <laughs> yeah, whether you like it or not, it is worth you see, your £4.50. That is important because your micro-budget innovators of today are your fucking studio directors of tomorrow. Exactly. Who support them now? It's like that geezer yeah. who made a hole in the ground and then did Evil Dead right. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Your small budget innovators mm-hmm. of today are going to be fucking propping up your big franchise horror properties of tomorrow. Precisely. So yeah. Be nice so to them. pay for the ones that you want to see, and yes, not the ones you don't. <laughs> yes. Yes. In fact, pay for the ones you want to see, and then steal one of the ones you don't. Ooh, there we go. I feel great about that. There you go. How about that? Completely on board. <laughs> Steal your Eli Roth <laughs> movies and pay for your Paul DeWan yes. movies. Yes. Steal Bloomhouse. Always right. thieve Bloomhouse It's always movies. fine to steal Bloomhouse. <laughs> Never knowingly paid for Bloomhouse. That's a fucking... <laughs> I do see a lot of those in the theater, though, so, you know. I think I've ever paid to see a Bloomhouse movie that I... That I surely you paid for Blue Get Mouse Out. Going in. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, I know. I don't think I did. You know, I don't believe I did. Tut tut. <laughs> That's yeah. okay. He's doing all I right. Did, no, I said I paid for us. 
I definitely paid for oh, us. I went there to see you go. us. There you go. <laughs> I definitely went and saw you both of absolved. those. I saw I saw both of those in the theater and I saw Nope three times in the theater. So Bloomhouse has gotten plenty for me. Although is nice. Nope Bloomhouse? I'm not sure. Um it's the what <laughs> it's the one with the horse. The one with the horse. Well, it's like the monkey's paw, which I think is Jordan Peele's company. Um but right. I don't know if Bloomhouse is involved. No. Nope. Uh just universal. I don't it doesn't say anything okay. about Bloomhouse. Nope went straight to Netflix, didn't it, over here? Did it? Like at the same time know. it was released? Uh no, it can't have been. It I was like, that's a shame because that is such a good big screen movie. No, I don't believe it was. If they ever re release that, I will go see it three times again. Even if I have to do it in the same day. Yeah. <laughs> good movie. Um good movie. Amazon listed as <laughs> Prime Wrist lists it as cerebral erotic horror. Erotic? I mean it's it's about the siblings. Hot, don't get me wrong. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. I I should you not. Ooh. Cerebral, serious, erotic. Listen, horror. AI is getting out of control lately. Very true. Very true. <laughs> Good grief. Uh, what else? What's next? Uh, what is next? Okay, well, we can talk about humane if you like. Sure, let's talk about humane. <laughs> this is. This is a funny one. So Humane is a film by Caitlin Cronenberg, uh, her debut. Yeah. So the other child, I don't know how many children he has, actually, David Cronenberg. Well, it's the third one making movies now. There's Brandon, yeah. Dave, the dad, the third movie making Cronenberg. Not the oh, third I thought movie third child. child. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Second of his children making uh, films. Mm. This the the premise here being that this there is some sort of basically like climate catastrophe and government like catastrophe an ecological and, event. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. That uh, basically makes it so the government decides that there needs to be population control in order to like rein things in. And in order to do that, they are asking people to. Yeah, they're using Mark's uh, eugenics here. You know, <laughs> but they're asking people to voluntarily uh, be euthanized and their families will re receive pay uh, if they euthanize themselves. So our story follows a wealthy like, family. I'm starting, to, I'm, I'm starting to see why I rated this as highly as I did. <laughs> I get it, right? In fact, Britain is in the midst of debate in Parliament on assisted dying, right? Mm, mm -hmm. Uh and if and when Labour get into power in a couple of weeks' time, it, it's it's largely, it feels kind of expected that that we'll have some kind of assisted dying reform. That's soon. that's nice. Yeah, it is. We're nice. nowhere is near nice. that. Here. Um, <laughs> this is not really a movie about assisted dying, though. No, it isn't. It isn't at all. It isn't at all. But you know, it it made me wonder if for the states, maybe there's a bit further you could go. It is like suggested dying something you might consider suggested like, you've got here's your bill mm. mr fucking hacken fucking dwight hacken or whatever your name is here's your medical bill <laughs> this is the A charge or you could name. die right yeah but I, I think for the states maybe rather than suggested uh, rather than assisted you could maybe build it into the consultation process that's basically Call how it a. works already you they just don't, they just don't yeah, do it in the those, hospital people just go home and do it uh, um, yeah yeah but that's yeah the movie isn't really about like no, the ethics isn't. of assisted suicide eugenics At all. for sure um and population yeah, 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 control yeah. for sure but not not necessarily about that that's just sort of a you know part of this but we come into mm. a family who is surprised to find that someone in their family has chosen to do this uh but when one decides not to they still need a body and they have to determine which of those family members is going to volunteer themselves yeah. up to die. No. <laughs> uh, this movie is currently uh, tootling along at like 2.5 stars or similar on that. I think watch. it's even less than that. It's like 2.1, which oh, I is think it? is harsh. One... Yeah, I don't, I didn't, <laughs> I think your 4.5 is maybe colored by a couple of tins. Yeah. Um, but well, well, see, this is <laughs> I it. don't think it's it a is, two point it one, is. maybe. See, I watched 
humane and it felt to me imbued with the great work of the great canon of horror directors previous right mm, mm-hmm. inhumane i saw not only cronenberg senior's work but also as i was watching it the fucking the beautiful static cameras and the kind of the kitchen sink drama and the performances it felt like it was drenched in like fucking argento and kubrick i was like this is a fucking working piece of work pins <laughs> Um, <laughs> and there was like meta textual stuff in there. She, you know, there were there were bits about her relationship with her dad. Mm-hmm. Uh, there were there were you know some of the dialogue later on, like how I've now evolved to outstrip the system. Da, 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 da. There was a lot of uh, kind of meta commentary on the nature of success in families was in mm-hmm. there as well. And and I was like, ah, ha, ha, I'm responding to this. I was really responding to it. Well, and that and is how you like, choose your rating system yes, is, did yes, I, like, it respond? it fucking is. It is. Uh, so I ain't going to back down. I'm not going to edit that. Fair I'm enough. not going to do it. Listen, you're entitled to it. I'm going to be the I outlier. Think it's, I'm going to yes, be the outlier. I think it's a little much. Uh, I think, like, with it, I mean, one of the problems with Humane is there's no one to root for because no one. you ah. hate everyone so much. I mean, they're all terrible. <laughs> Um, yes, and yes, yes. so that makes it a little difficult to sort of stick with these people for 90 minutes, you know, and it is just a 90 minute movie, yeah. you know, um, but because yeah. you, you, you're you not star. really rooting for them, it's uh, mm. like that does make it a little difficult. I think it's, you know, Jay not... Baruchel, play a likable character challenge. <laughs> right. Uh, I think when he plays, he's in a couple episodes of Are You Afraid of the Dark when he was a kid that he's he's likable right. in. Uh, but yeah, he became. It's, I don't know if it's his voice or what, but like he just has a a, a douchey presence. He does about him. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. it's it's fully out there in this one. I mean, he is just tough to watch. Uh, it but it also then has like sort of a a mid movie change in everybody all of a sudden that doesn't isn't really earned. Um, you know, uh, where suddenly all the characters experience growth simultaneously. It doesn't really yeah. make sense. Um, you know, it's got it's not the most unique premise. Uh, but I I did tell you, I was like one one of my favorite horror subgenres is dinner party. Uh, and so yeah, 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 I do, do enjoy, it. It, and it does have that kind of the feast kind of mm-hmm. that's. See, I respond also to intimacy and fucking mm-hmm. letting performances do the talking, yeah. and I fucking this. I'm I'm yeah. I want to if I'm like, going to edit think, my review I'm going to give it five stars. Yeah. The parts are there I think is the thing. Um mm. you know and Enrico Colantoni is always amazing and he's fant- he's the best part of this movie in my opinion aside from Sandy Cohen who just like ages like a fine wine. That man gets hotter and hotter by the day. But um like I think it's oh, like is all that the guy of who, the... like don't tell me that wasn't Billy Bob Thornton. He is so much hotter than Billy Bob Thornton. The patriarch of the family. Peter Gallagher, the yeah. Mm-hmm. Billy Bob Thornton it's in not, a wig. No, not like You're I, like, I had to look it up. Like a this third is of the, the Zach Braff convinced. thing all over again. I don't understand uh, your it might inability. Be, yeah, it might be. I'm the opposite of a super one. recognizer. Yeah, I'm right. like. Like, like a negative. They all look though. the same. It's like hair color is as far as you get with the <sighs> basic facial structure. Um, no, Peter Gallagher, oh, yeah. who is wonderful. Um, but yeah, I think all the parts are sort of like there. And I think that like mm. for a first movie, like perfectly cromulent. And I think it's, you know, from here it's gonna go up. But I think one of the things that like about it being kind of mediocre that I like is yeah. that it doesn't feel like it's resting on Cronenberg laurels. Certainly. You know? Like, There's it doesn't no, feel like yeah, a Nepo movie. It's not a Nepo movie. movie. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, this felt like she made it all on her own. The influence, yes. like, Brandon Cronenberg, his movies are clearly Cronenberg movies, you know? Yes. <laughs> like, like that. he came from that family, and you can see it. Um, you wouldn't necessarily look at this and be like, oh, this has, like, strong influences of her father. Except maybe sort of from, like, the more, like the ones that I was saying a couple weeks ago that I liked, the more kind of um, character uh, yeah. stories that he, he writes, you know, like, or that he directs, well, I mean, like, his, it, um, History of Violence. Plot-wise, like thematically-wise, it had loads of dad's hang-ups in there. <laughs> sure. 
yeah you know daddy I mean? issues for sure but that doesn't necessarily you know mean it's about david cronenberg <laughs> like, of course and that yeah, could be yeah, made by any director who has daddy issues <laughs> Mm. so you know i think we know that like who her dad is but that doesn't necessarily mean that like it's super shaped by you having to know that you know what i mean yes or maybe yeah maybe a an overpoweringly successful dad right yeah 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 definitely Mm -hmm. Mm. so yeah i think she's in there i don't think that it has like a it just doesn't give me that feeling of being like yeah, okay, I get it. I, I know who your father is or whatever. And I also ex- exactly take what you mean about about Brandon Brandon Cronenberg's films mm-hmm. of his of his three so far. Two have been instant fucking whoa, holy <laughs> shit kind of yeah. experiences. Right. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Like, you know, if you want to no, take no. after what your dad's doing, that's great. That's cool. It's just like, you know, for sure, you know, you are getting something that feels Cronenbergian when you get something from those two. Um, yes. And this doesn't necessarily have that feel to it. So I kind of appreciate that it feels like its own thing and that I I yes. like I will watch whatever she does next. Oh, listen, no doubt. Absolutely no doubt at all. <laughs> what else? Uh, all right. Ah, now. You're going to enjoy talking about Civil War again. I didn't talk about it the first time. Okay. Uh, managed to skip over it somehow, even though it was funny because before we started that episode, I ranted to you and mm. was like just so angry about that movie and then somehow <laughs> forgot to talk about it when we mm. got to it. And then you were like, oh, that's fine. I'm not going to watch it. Uh, and then you did. No, so I, now, I think, now I'm going to I think get we paused ranting. on it because I was going to watch it. No, I think I you was were like, super no, intent on going to the cinema. No, you were like, that doesn't sound like uh, I would be into huh. it. Okay. <laughs> but go, yeah, go on with this one. Well, I guess... This one makes me ragey. All right. And all, all I'm going to say is, look, there's a couple of things which I really, really enjoy in movies, right? Being places that I've been in movies, yeah. <laughs> right? Uh, seeing those places get blown up. Yeah. <laughs> um, sure. Alex Garland really like him. Sure. Just I I just really fucking like his stuff. He's I don't think he's ever really missed for me. Um, Nick Offerman love. Sure. Uh, kind of alt alt timeline movies. Right. Love. Yeah. The end of the world, living it, love it. Um. But what I don't like is uh white supremacy narratives. <laughs> right. Yeah, really. especially sort which aren't, of lazy which aren't recognized ones. as such. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, this movie. Uh, you know, when it, when Men came out, a lot of people mm. criticized that one for being like very basic. Like, oh, did a man realize it's hard to be a woman? Uh, yeah, sure. And I was like, yeah, no, I get that. That's valid, but also I think like it is interesting to see a man's take on that realization or whatever. And then after watching this, I think Alec Garland might be stupid, and <laughs> it's oh, starting to make yep. me reevaluate uh, mm-hmm. on these things. Is I think he does great with tech narratives and stuff like that, but then this sort of like woke Alex Garland is not smart enough to be making the movies that he's making. Um, And this one, I think, you know, I I was talking to, my husband watched it yesterday and also, you know, hated it. Uh, (laughs) But we came out of it like, okay, just on a first like movie making level, it does, you know, it's pretty or whatever, has big explosions, all that kind of stuff. But it's a very bad movie storytelling wise. The idea of like not filling in any of the story and then having these very one dimensional characters who like talk in bursts of exposition, um, you know, is just lazy. Um, Mm. (laughs) The the characters are unlikable, but I don't think it knows how unlikable it is. They are, I think, um, you know, there's just it's a lazy movie when it comes to the actual like script. Uh, that is involved in See, this movie. Kirsten Dunst and her mate, the two reporters. Mm-hmm. I actually, I, I didn't hate at all. I, oh, I did, I worst. disliked the girl a great deal. Yeah, I mean, she's just transparently um, awful. Yeah, just this plucky young go getter of yeah. a, a photographer. I thought I didn't connect with her one little bit, but. I, I, I like Kirsten Dunst a great deal. and I like her I've generally. In, in this, yeah. she is a... I 
Did you hit record at any point? No. <laughs> no Guess we're no, using no. the Zoom audio today. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but anyways, I like Kirsten, Kirsten Dunst generally. Um, I think it does her a disservice to have her play such an entirely one-dimensional character. Um, flat and humorless. Flat humorless. And like to the, like everything about the characters was such a trope that like at one point, oh my God, what is it that the the black fella says to the girl, like something like, don't be such a hot shot. And I was like, come the fuck on. Like, it's like every like, you know, plucky rookie cop with the grizzled old, you know, sure. person who has to take her under her wing, mm. you know, and doesn't want to do this, but she's forced to by the circumstance, you know? And it's like, I've seen this movie many, many times usually yeah. done a lot better than many this. times many years ago right yeah like this is this is an 80s story yes that we've got right here we've all seen this movie um and so like just it's a lazy movie uh all the way through on that on that part and then when it comes to like the politics or lack thereof in this movie i equated it to like how martin mcdonough who I absolutely love, you know, yeah, sure. um, he made three billboards, right? And he tried to take the same kind of humor that he used in like in Bruges and stuff like that and bring it over here and like, you know, dislikable people, but we empathize with them and things like that. But when those people are racists uh, and you don't include the targets of their racism and you don't include the structures that created this society, you just have a racist movie. And that's what Alex Garland did with this one is he thought if I remove the politics from this, uh, then I can kind of just like say whatever about journalism or whatever or about war or whatever the fuck he's trying to say. You know, I've seen a couple of people say what, you know, <laughs> Alex Garland is basically coasting off people watching the movie and making smarter meanings of it than he did. <laughs> Um, mm. So people can make meanings of this that uh, are something, but there isn't a meaning there. And throughout this movie, you've basically like all people of color die, like period, for an undefined reason. Right? <laughs> like, you know, we cut, we meet like a couple of Asian fellas and they're killed by a white supremacist. But like for for what, you know, yeah, yeah, but yeah. who chooses not to kill the white guy with the thick accent who says he's from florida mm. like you know like what like it seems like he's supposed to be anti-immigrant but he's not yeah. he's just anti-people it's very color. casual isn't it you're mm. you lose your your black fella in a heroic self-sacrifice you know you're like black like people of color do not live in this movie but it's unremarked upon in the movie why is this happening what are like mm. you know the the idea of like the states that have combined together in this don't make any sense to reality but we're supposed to accept that but you can't do that in america because the reason that we have racist pockets and things like that are because of these legacies of structures and the reasons that states are the way they are is because of the way this country, you know, was founded and, you know, why states were created and, you know, who the people were who were in charge and stuff like that. So you can't just be like, I'm just wiping that out. And mm. some people are racist and some people are not racist and there's no rhyme or reason to it. And also only white people can live. Like what? you said about maybe crediting Alex Garland with too much in terms of intent. Mm -hmm. The were I to be charitable, I would ask, is he assuming a certain is he is he putting faith in his audience to know who the scumbags are? Without and, and like, needing to of show course the screen a racist texting, is, a, you know? is a scum scumbag, right? Like we know that, but you also, as the white director of this movie, have just killed off all the people of color in it. So why yeah, are you yeah, different yeah, from the guy who act who in your movie does it, you know? And mm -hmm. on top of this, like it's this whole the whole conceit of just imagine if this happened here with all us white people is a galling 
premise, especially with like, you know, <laughs> everything that happened in Rafa yesterday, where there's mm. like beheaded babies and things like that, like actual brown people dying on mass in a war. And you're going to go, I never thought about that till you put it in D.C., yeah, Gosh, yeah, this yeah. is really isn't war bad? You guys, look what if what if they blew up white people? This is yeah, crazy. You know, it's so fucking racist on its face. You know, the whole idea of like let's transplant a thing that is the reality for people in countries we have colonized all over the world and put mm. it in our yard. And then yeah. now it's going to mean something to us, you know, now that we've put it where we live. <gasps> like, what? Fuck you. <laughs> Seriously? Oh, it makes me so angry on every conceivable level to just have this guy come in with no knowledge of the place he's making a movie about with these complete just colonizer narratives. Like everything about it is gross 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 to its very core and oh my loathing is deep and wide yeah it's tough to argue cory it's tough to <laughs> it's tough to come out swinging for civil war yeah you know it's always like i think like my husband grew up with a lot more like um in his face racism than i did because you know he was one of you know basically three asian kids in the very white supremacist place he grew up um mm. You know, and those other two Asian kids were in his family. <laughs> and so when he watches things like this, I often see like how affected he is by the treatment of Asian characters in them. And so like his sort of reaction to like these two Asian men who you're introduced to, who are introduced to as like completely irresponsible dickheads, essentially, and then immediately murdered for being Asian, like that is a hurtful thing for an Asian who has experienced racism in America to watch. And who is that for? You don't mm. have to tell Asians that this is what white people are like. Do we need to tell white people that this is what white people are like? What are you getting out of that? Who Who is learning from this? What do we get except war porn, racism porn? You know, like, ugh, it's just, yeah, it makes me mad and I hate civil war. So war much. porn, yeah, well yeah. put. <sighs> Anyways, what else did we watch? Uh, At least I got the rant out, you know. <laughs> yeah, well done. Well done. <laughs> all the all those weeks later, <laughs> finally just get okay, it off my chest. Okay, let's see. Uh thanks to a uh thanks for watch along. I finally picked <laughs> Congo. Yes. Congo off my list and, you know, it's fine, you know. It's fine. <laughs> it's a perfect watch along movie. It's it's Yes, it is. It is. There ain't much going on. Um, no, there's there's Tim Curry being glorious. Yes, obviously doing the like most indistinguishable, vaguely yeah. Eastern European, Eastern European kind of like sometimes uh, just abandoned altogether when it gets too hard to yeah, keep doing yeah, yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, exactly, but chewing chewing yes. scenery. <laughs> yes, as um, he's want to do. We have one of my favorite milfs ever. Which is Laura Linney? Ozark. I can't remember. Is that Laura Linney? Laura Linney. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, interesting. So so so, so beautiful. As I said um, during that, I associate her with like stressed out white women because of the characters that she course. plays. So I'm like, of like course. I, I get it. She is objectively beautiful. It's just because I associate her with stress, she doesn't hit the yep, same high like, tension. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, listen, you know how I enjoy a movie from like the dawn of the information age right yeah right <laughs> and that's what we've got here we've got a movie right on the cusp of of kind of widespread internet uptake mm -hmm. yes when you still have to hack the mainframe and you still <laughs> have to kind of hit your fucking back door on the subnet to get your email through right um and it's got fucking you know fold out satellite dishes and it's got palm pilots yes you know what i mean oh, and it's man. got jacking in using your fucking you know your coax cord and your <laughs> uh it's yeah it, it's got a lot of quaint 
hang on, is this computers? Uh, right. Kind of designed to it. And I'm, nobody I, at I, home I knows, it. so they can get away with whatever yeah, they Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. Yeah. With a Kelly Rowland, it's like Kelly Rowland text. Yeah, right, in the Excel, Excel spreadsheet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's that. <laughs> and nobody else knew either. So, uh, hey, computers, cool. Um, All over that. Absolutely love it. Um, But that's about it. I mean, again... Yeah. If if you wanna if you want if you wanna go looking for racism, it's <laughs> oh on, yeah, right. You know you don't gotta look too hard in Congo. No, um, absolutely not. Uh, yeah, uh, even from like yeah. black characters, like the um, uh, Winston. What is his actual yeah. name? His name is Ernie Hudson. Ernie Hudson, yeah. yeah. Even makes like a pretty racist Africa joke in it during it. It's you know. It's certainly like we mentioned this in the watch along chat, but like the the 90s had like this deep fixation on the idea of like African tribes and this sort of yes, like backwardsness of Africa and all that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah. And like, you know, it that is very present in this movie, um, you know, meeting the the tribal people and their silly worship of the sun and things like that, you know. Uh, yeah. pl- placed against those very modern American black people or the the white folks in it. I wonder how much of that Michael Jackson helped or hindered. Because he, I, I seem to recall, he had a big kind of like an African ethnic imagery iconography, thing. kind of tribal, kind mm, of indigenous yeah. vibe for a long old right. while. Yeah, With black or white and earth song mm-hmm. and shit. He he went right into that. Yeah, and then, like, in the 90s, like, even music really embraced kind of that, like, world music there thing, you, go. you know? Everything yes, had chanting yes, yes. in it and stuff like that. Paul Simon. Like, right, uh, Sting, like, you know, everybody yeah. was putting <laughs> stuff in, in in there. It's like, there's that song from the parent trap that you hear everywhere. Hey, um, uh, ma, 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 you know, like, stuff yes, like that. Like, yes, it was huge. Uh, none of this meet Return to Innocence by Enigma was, like, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. huge. So, I don't know. It was, like, this strange Wasn't that? Moment. Oh, no, I'm thinking of Sadness Part 1 also by Enigma. Oh, that was the mon- by monkey Enigma. kind of chanty one, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Which is different to Yeah, it's different than about. the Return to Innocence is the... Ah, yeah, 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 I don't know, maybe it had something to do with, like, the the booming of technology and things like that that people were like Could have what been, if we we're got getting back smaller. to yeah what if we yeah. got back to when we were like tribal you know yeah uh, and there's still people living like this all over the world but mostly it like you know that there's the sort of attempt at appreciation that was of course bordering on appropriation and then there was stuff that just ended up deeply racist your jungle yeah. to jungle and krippendorf's tribe and you know all these <laughs> kinds of things like that that were Horrific. Yeah. So, yeah. But Congo, you know, when you just kind of (laughs) allow for that, it's, you know, it's a silly, absurd movie that you can't really be mad at when you're watching it. I mean, a a, a gorilla smokes a cigarette and everyone acts like that makes perfect sense. That's the kind of movie this is. And drinks a martini. Yeah. (laughs) What will future generations, obviously bold of me to assume there will be future generations, but... (laughs) What will be our kind of ethnic jewelry, tribal mm. appropriationism in our art? What is our version of that? That's such a funny question because, and I've kind of thought about this before, because obviously we live in a time that's like tries to be really conscious of that kind of mm. stuff. And yet inevitably there's going to be stuff that people look back on and be like, fucking yikes, <laughs> you know? Because there's still I like- I don't know about you, but I didn't notice at the time mm-hmm. that- Hang on, it's fucking movies and music have gone indigenous crazy. What's right. Going on? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was totally. like our tribes again? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what what would be ours, I wonder? Yeah, that's a very good question. We've still got a lot of weird ableist shit to work through at this point. Mm. I feel like it's gonna be a lot of a lot of that. A lot of fat phobia stuff still. That's a, a thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, um but yeah, I guess I the know. only way to tell is to live through it and look back, eh? Exactly. So it's uh, it's really 50-50 on whether we'll ever know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> right. So last movie, uh, I, I managed to squeak in Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Right. Did that one today. Today. 
with Owen. It's a monkey movie week. I'm sure there are people Isn't who are it? so annoyed that like we call like Congo and Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes monkey movies when like it's in the title. Well, it's an ape. What the fuck else are you gonna? It's an ape. Them? It's not monkey a monkey. Films. Yes. <laughs> but, um. So I apologize to anyone who's been sitting there stewing as we say this, but go on. Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. So first thing, let's please, please, please address the titles of these movies and just go to of the apes because of the of the the of the of the kind of format ain't fucking working mate yeah kingdom of the apes war of the apes war for the apes but of the of the apes absolutely not no no points send it back in don't like it now (laughs) i'm a big fan of this series right i do know that as you may or may not know Mm -hmm. a lot of people are it's pretty popular and rightly so right what they've done you know it's it's an IP that could have could have had a kind of a uh, will this do kind of good enough break mm-hmm. even at the box office kind of attitude, but no, they're actual movies. It's an actual series. It's a really really fucking solid solid movies. This one is the toughest to get through. Ooh. Um, I do, and I don't know if is is it that kind of thing of being asked to root hard for special effects the entire mm. movie. This, this is kind you know, of why I've never really been able to watch these movies. Period. Is you know how I am about like see another cartoons human for and like effects. The first and, Forty minutes. Yeah, all but right. it's just like like I can't watch a movie that is all special effects monkeys. <laughs> it's just simply that's, well, that's not what this people. Is. I that can't do that. This is. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, at least at least with the last one, there were more humans, mm-hmm. and then with the first two, there were plenty of humans. Sure. Yeah. With this one, there's like six humans. <laughs> And it's all CG monkeys. So maybe yeah. that's a barrier to empathy for a start. Mm-hmm. Um, all of the, you know, it's, it's not that great a spoiler, but none of the cast from the first three survived into this. It's all new monkeys. I didn't think so, yeah. All new monkeys, all new problems, all new More monkeys, more problems. Yeah, exactly this. Um, it gave me monkeys. <laughs> this fucking movie. <laughs> uh so yeah i found it i found it a bit of a stress to mm. get through to be honest it's a how long is this which... movie it feels like it'd be a long movie um i'll just do the research on that one for you corrigan 145 minutes Oof. you know that's a lot of monkey it's uh got a story to tell and by god it ain't gonna <laughs> rush itself not for you sir <laughs> no absolutely not i mean look there are worse movies but war sure. for the future of the planet of the apes. Uh, yeah, no, fucking steal it off the internet. Fair enough. <laughs> I'd be smart about it were it not for the fact that I use my free monthly cinema code from Sky to take Owen. So oh, very nice. Yeah, yeah that's a plus. Yep. Yeah. Um, okay. Now, we went on, uh, well, I was kind of on an adventure, I suppose, here, a thematic adventure when it came to uh, films. I oh, cool. went to the movies, of course, mm. to see Furiosa, naturally. Yes. Um, and that sort of spawned a like, you know, I had to rewatch Fury Road after that. And then I texted you uh, for one of our movie nights um, and was like, what do you think of watching the OG Mad Max? Because I literally like yeah. the last time I saw that I was between the ages of seven and 10. I was very young. I know Mad Max was like oh. kind of a staple in our household when I was growing up, um, but I have not seen it in a very long time. So I was like, like, why don't we watch that? As I said to you at the time, very surprising to hear you actually <laughs> ask for a Mel Gibson film. Yeah, like, not a thing that happens what? a whole heck of a lot, All which right. my response to was, it's very old and you're going to steal it. So yeah, that's true. That's I true. feel I feel pretty OK about watching that. And it's part of, you know, a little bit of a semi completionist um, situation. I will say with Mad Max, with the OG, they were like bits and pieces I remembered of it. But it was interesting to watch this one having, you know, watched the recent movies uh, yeah. because like it, it's interesting to see like the start of the dystopia. Right. Yes. Like you're seeing like the very beginnings of what we know then turns into something like absolutely horrific and unrecognizable as yeah. our society. But in Mad Max, it's like, it's not that bad. <laughs> it's like, you've got some no, not people. At all. It, it's 
you know, they've got shops and water. Yeah, right. You can live fuel. in your like cozy house and yeah, you know, yeah, all yeah, that yeah, stuff. Yeah. And you got some bad people roaming around taking advantage of the, of the lawlessness of the situation and whatnot. But like you could live like it would it would be a little stressful, but your life wouldn't be that that different. <laughs> it's like uh, I said to you, although you had fallen asleep by this point, it's like the, like yep. honestly, this movie could just be Australia. <laughs> This doesn't oh, completely! It's like a really a, a, like a reality TV show about like an Australian <laughs> suburb, right? Like just just some outback craziness or whatever. Like you yeah. know, it doesn't have like huge hallmarks of dystopia to it. No. Um, in this movie, and honestly, it's like it's a f- an okay movie. Um, I was reading some other people's reviews of it because I noticed like you know, in modern eyes, like looking at Letterbox, like most people give it around a three at this point. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay, so that's not just me. It's just kind of okay. But someone was talking about how like the thing that you have to realize about Mad Max is it's one of those movies that like pioneered a lot of stuff, especially with the action sequences that now yeah. we see all the time. And yep. so looking at it now, you're like, oh, okay, that's passable. But like then it was like, holy shit, I've never seen this on my screen before. Yeah, I mean, it felt more in the, yeah, rather than it would influence stuff to come, it felt more like a product of its time being more, like, it felt more like a Roger Corman fucking movie. <laughs> it does like kind of have that race, element to it. Yeah. Or, oh, you know, yeah, for sure. It, it it felt more, all right, it went on to become, a, have a massive kind of cultural imprint, but I think at the yeah. time, it was just fucking video shop fodder, wasn't it? it, it right, it, yeah, yeah. It was of a genre as opposed to starting a genre. Right. Yeah. And I think when I think about it, I think probably the stuff that I I remember little bits of Thunderdome. And I think probably what I remember the most is Road Warrior because there are things that I'm like, why isn't this happening in here? Uh, (laughs) And I I think like then I was looking at Letterboxd. I'm like, okay, Road Warrior is like the masterpiece of the of the first series of them. So I do want to get to, you know, maybe this week watching well, maybe not this week because I'm going away, but soon watching those other movies as well. Just to... I would certainly do two and three with you, yes. Okay, good. We'll, we'll do mm. two and three and report back on that. But then, so of course, you know, I rewatched Fury Road, um, which is a masterpiece. I mean, come on. <laughs> I don't think I have to say a whole lot more. Probably everyone has seen it. And yeah, it's... just a, a, one of those films that leaves you scratching your head. How did it get made? Who the right. fuck? How did this? How yeah, does this especially exist? you know thirty years after the yeah you know, yeah, yeah the preceding yeah. films that yep. this ended up being made is absolutely wild. But then is just an incredible movie uh, on every mm. level. Uh, and went to see Furiosa, which I think you know <laughs> poor Furiosa suffers from following a perfect movie um and so you know it's not a perfect movie it's it's not fury road um for whatever reason the effects aren't as good as fury Road. So you're definitely very aware of the cgi um in this movie in ways that like um you know i came home i was like do i just remember fury road wrong like you know like because it's been i mean i've seen it many times since but like you know at the time maybe it looked good and didn't and then i went home and watched it i was like no the effects are definitely better in fury road Mm. than in furiosa um and you know i was saying this to sam this isn't to spoil anything about this is everything i'm saying is stuff you would glean from the trailers um but the thing about fury road right is it's a it's a straightforward story when it comes down to it you know you you know what has to happen in that movie you know like kind of uh what her goals are where the story is moving towards um where furiosa is more convoluted because the thing is we Mm -hmm. know we've seen what happens later on right so you know that like immortan joe is not going to get killed in this movie because of the prequel Um, right you know that um you know all those towns gas town and the citadel and all that kind of stuff like are intact you know that she's not going to go back to the green place because she hasn't been back when you see her in um in fury road so like there's all these kinds of threads throughout this that you're like i know where this goes so like what's happening here um what are we what are we like what's what are we aiming towards um yeah sure 
And so I think that it makes the movie a little more meandering than Fury Road is. Um, and once you kind of lean into that, I think, you know, it works and everything, but you have to kind of recognize that it isn't like a just a sure. straight story, you know? Um, yeah, I mean, different different series, different story, different vibe, but same point. It's why there was absolutely no threat or any kind of real high stakes for something like Solo, for example. Mm-hmm, right. You yeah. know full fucking well he's going to be fine right. because you've yeah, seen exactly. another eight movies with him in. Uh, <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. It's hard no to make stakes. you sort of care, you know, when you know, mm. yeah, at least the stakes of certain elements of this. There's mm-hmm. no, like, we know she's not going to die or anything like that. Mm. And I don't think it tries to, you know, it doesn't, because of that, it doesn't make this mistake of trying to put her in peril that you think she's not going to live through or anything. And I appreciate okay, okay, that. Okay, like, okay. there's none of that yes. stuff in it. Uh, but yeah, it's a little more of a meandering movie than that. One of the things I love about it, though, and, and just about these films in general, is that they're like so intense and high stakes. <laughs> um, and, you know, there's like all this, all Relentless. this like, yeah, and this, these deep stories in it. And, you know, these messages about feminism and patriarchy and about, you know, ecological collapse and all kinds of stuff to that. But then they're also like extremely immature. So then you have like his sons whose names are like Rictus, Rictus Erectus and Scrotus, you know, <laughs> like, right, so yeah. then you just throw in shit like that, that you're like, <laughs> come on. Or like, you know, the guy who has his nipples out with the little things hanging from him the whole time and stuff yeah. like that. Like, you know, you know it, the, the universe the Mad Max universe feels very 2000 AD to me in that sense. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Completely. Doesn't it though? It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's got that kind of British got sensibility to it. Muties or whatever they're called all over, yeah, all over yeah, the place. Yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. I get big 2000 AD vibes from, from mm. the, the, that particular version of, of the, the end of the world. Yeah. Which I'm sure would have influenced mm. him. Absolutely. Right. Like the first Mad Max is, 79 like 70s yeah, yeah and like 2000 ad started in the late mm-hmm. 70s right so i'm sure that you know that's not coincidence the similarities between the mad max universe and the 2000 ad universe no not in the least the more <laughs> the more and the more you think of it the more there are you know? right yeah absolutely i'm sure that probably somewhere out there he's talked about that i would be surprised if it hasn't come up i'm just doing a quick google to see if he's ever <laughs> to see if he's movie. ever spoken about it no oh, yeah it'd be, it'd be weird if he hasn't uh but yeah i'm enjoying my little mad max voyage Good. and uh you and i can watch the the other two to finish it out i would love that beautiful um and then the other thing that I watched before we get to our 20 questions uh, was yes. Day of the Dead, which was a mistake. Not watching it wasn't a mistake, but uh, on Dead and Lovely, they're doing Romero, uh, where they mm, were watching nice. Land of the Dead, but I read it wrong, or maybe I read what I wanted to read uh, and yeah. was like, great, I shall watch Day of the Dead <laughs> preparation uh for this episode uh this is a movie i haven't seen since i don't know high school really yeah probably somewhere in that vicinity i could be wrong but i would say high school uh i want to look at how you start it but you know what just tell me how did i start it i think i gave it four okay okay yes um yeah no i absolutely love it And, and you know that like zombies are not necessarily my thing i do have i have plenty of exceptions um but you know it's not necessarily a thing i love day of the dead of all the movies that um what my special effects guy who did the the effects uh greg nicotero no 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 he's in it though but no it's the other one (laughs) stan winston no the the guy Tom Savini. Tom Savini. That's like it's the obvious one. Of course it is. What's of, <laughs> of all the things Tom Savini has done, I think Day of the Dead is the most. How the fuck did he do that? Ah, great. Of yeah, any yeah, yeah. of his movies, like there's parts where, like you know, I I hate how gross zombie movies are, and yet I couldn't yeah. look away because I was trying to like parse out. Yeah, yeah, how he yeah, was yeah, doing yeah. It. It's almost like. It's it's almost like a live magic trick, isn't it? Right. Where you look and yeah. See exactly. Where the joins are. Right. Where the legs going in that particular model? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah I completely agree. 
when someone switches from a real face to mannequin yeah, stretched yeah, yeah, out, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, things like that. Yeah. It's just so impressive on a practical mm-hmm. effects level. And I think it it holds up so well in like if you changed like the music and if you like remastered this, it mm. would be like a movie that came out now. It's not cheesy. Brilliant. Um, really great point. Yeah, the like the acting in it is great. The characters are great. The um uh you know the the storyline is at times moving, it's scary, yeah, yeah. it's you know, all of these kinds of things. Um, it's funny. <laughs> Bub yep. is hilarious, but also moving. Like at times you find yourself tearing up over a zombie, <laughs> you know? Um, so true. It, it's just such an impressive movie on every level a- and also falls into the category of how, you know, I've been talking about how I think we have made villains too nuanced in 2024. <laughs> and it's like, I... I really appreciate it when it's like, no, the villain is just like a bad guy and Rhodes yes. is just fucking irredeemable. <laughs> as well as his his, his little, whole crew. His little yeah. unit. Just yeah. all just the just, worst kind of shitheads. Yeah, the absolute worst people from start to finish. I mean, you come in mm. with them, you know, making rape jokes and all kinds of stuff like that. Like there is no question these yes. guys are terrible um, and earn every bit of pain that they receive by the end of this movie and you know the 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 kind of the three top tier shitheads in this film it saves their deaths for the last kind of 15 right. minutes so you of the movie really enjoy you want, them. Oh, you yeah. are properly you go through the ringer waiting for these fuckers to get chomped and yeah. then they really do and they yeah they go in kind of the the best worst possible ways you know yeah. the, but you're right about the it's it's it has beautiful moments of introspection, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. When you know you you, you just got to question what the fuck was it all for? What was right. the point? Mm-hmm. Oh, yes, it's yeah, such it's a bleak. downer of so a film. Bleak. Day of the Dead. Yeah. I love it. I love it with all my heart. Yeah. So, Day of the Dead was a a great watch. Beautiful. To, you know, I don't think that like I I would say I think I liked it before. I mean, mm. um, but I think this is one that to look at now I like even more than. Yeah than i did before easily easily my favorite of that series Mm -hmm. um in fact my second favorite of that series is the remake from 1990 of night the living dead oh yeah which is great phenomenal movie (laughs) so much better than it has any right to be but that was sabini too right like he directed that yes it was yes he did yes he fucking did he's just been cast in terrifier three in fact has he yes indeed interesting i am i do i am on the fence about that film obviously i'm going to see it uh yeah. but terrifier 2 is a real mixed bag for me so look it's really this is a make or break one for me i think yeah i get it i get it i get it the criticisms are all just right because it's a one-man show because he's fucking doing it all <laughs> himself yeah uh, he he doesn't have any, and, and because he's made ridiculous untold profit with terrifying, right? Yeah, <laughs> no one is going to be saying shit to him. Exactly, which um, I think is unfortunate because so, it works against him. You know, like it's exactly, like, exactly. Oh, I have now like budget beyond what I ever had, and it was super successful. So he probably could make better movies, yeah. but it's entirely on him because no one is going yeah. to. Uh, but that, that is on the that. one constant criticism but terrified too it was half an hour too fucking long i right. i even said it myself I yeah like, like there's film. really no denying no. that whether you liked it or not it is too yeah. much movie yeah <laughs> it yeah. is yeah. a yeah. little yeah. indulgent and so i just really hope that like he doesn't take that and go well fuck you then i'm making the movie yeah. like which is <laughs> like he's entitled yeah. to of course hey, but i think he could make i would respect either play. You know? yeah i just think like you should want your movies to be better and so I fact, hope he makes it better. Uh, make it longer. That's, that's <laughs> just what go you full James make, Cameron on it. Make it fuck longer. You. Fuck them. Yeah. How much did your last movie make, pal? Yeah. Fuck off. I'm gonna make like it half that, an hour longer. This is the effect of the blur makes it look like it's blurring out my middle finger. It does actually. Zoom mm-hmm. has my best interest at heart. <laughs> Very nice. Um. Now. I guess okay. we're, I'm going to guess what you watched. 
All right. In uh, in an item purely for my own gratification, um, out of just for no reason, I was on the sofa. I had a couple of hours to kill until our movie uh, that we were watching. And I happened across a movie on Netflix and I hadn't seen it in ages. So I pressed play and watched it. And so you have something that questions. would be. Yeah, it's something that just as a ground, it's something that would be on Netflix that you had yes. seen before. It's not new to you. And right. I would have heard of it. Yes. OK. So there's our ground thing. Is it horror? Okay. No. Okay. Are you ca- are you counting questions? Along. That was one. <laughs> Thank you. I almost lost track. Yeah, yeah. I was just asking <laughs> if we were I counting am, yes. them. Okay. It's not a horror movie. Is it a comedy? No. Is it I'm trying to go more specific than just like is it a drama? Is it a war movie? No. These are great questions. Is it a gangster movie? No. Great questions. <laughs> you're going to zoom in. You're going to zero in on it. Uh, that's what I'm aiming for. Okay. Not war, yeah. not gangster. Um, not horror. Oh, is it an is it an action movie? No. Fuck me. Yeah, that's right. Uh, okay. Is it? All right. Let's maybe I branch outside of drama. Uh, is it from the eighties? No. Is it more recent than the eighties? Yes. A seven. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. Um. Oh, is she going to do it? Is it... Was it popular, like a like a big movie? Uh, was it a box office smash? No. Okay. Um, all right. Is... Is the main... Is it about centrally one person uh it's one person's story yes but with you know other kind of notable characters within that (laughs) okay but like as opposed to like you know like a stand by me that's like you know an ensemble is what it's focused i'm with you like about it's chiefly about one guy yeah okay that's nice about one guy (laughs) <laughs> one guy guy i have always used in a non-gender specific sense but okay. <laughs> okay it's about one guy um is it about uh is a central part of this movie about falling in love no okay that's 10 we're halfway through. Halfway. All right. This yeah. one's tough. It um, is, isn't it? <laughs> okay. Is... I think you can do it. I think there's one or two questions that are just going to blow yeah, this Yeah, that would white blow open. it out. Yeah. Yeah. Is it about um, this man's family life? No. Okay. Okay, it's not action or horror or comedy. Nope. It's about one nope. guy, not his family or his love life. Um, let's see. What else are movies about? This is where my tendency to only watch one genre I see. I is see. tricky. Uh, <laughs> is it about this person's special interest? Yes. Okay. That's 12. Is it based on something else, like a book or a comic book or something else? That is an excellent question. Not in any notable sense, no. Okay. What was the answer? It it is about someone's special interest. Very much so, yes. Is it? Hmm. Oh man, I have how many more? 
you have seven, seven more questions. Seven more questions. Um, yes, checks fingers. Okay. Is does this movie take place firmly in reality? Yes. Okay. Special interest of a guy. Some other people around him. It's in reality. Yeah. It's not about war. Nope. Does this guy invent or make something? Great question. No. Okay. Not in not not in the way that you mean. <laughs> sure. Um. Wow. I have to go. Five more. Man, oh man, yeah. what else are movies? Would you like about? a clue? Let me see. Let me give. Let me see what I can give you. I'm going to read you some quotes that got printed on the poster. Oh, that's fun. Okay. Uh, let me see. Uh, Collider called it a work of bravura filmmaking. Okay. Um, exhilarating is what uh, Grantland had to say about it. Okay. Examiner.com said that this film will have audiences cheering and begging for an encore. Wow. Mm. Okay. Interesting. Exhilarating. Yeah. Cheering. All of which are true. Provocative and emotionally intense. We are on this guy's side. As he uh. I feel like there's like something like just at the edge of my mind that is like not fully forming. Uh oh man. Okay. Does he is his special interest like a okay. Think about this. Oh man. Is a uh, boy. I'm oh, I'm struggling because there's only only five questions. This is yeah. This is yeah. I can really see the tricky. tension on your face. Yeah, I can see it. yeah. I I love to be able to guess things. Let's be real. And uh, I'm going to start giving yeah. you more clues. The more you've, questions. It just on. feels like you've kind of maybe narrow. This is something that's like outside of normally what I oh, would watch. It's, and it's so, nothing that I would ever watch. Oh yeah, so. like it's it's outside of like the scope of our normal things, and so it's like my brain is struggling to get out. What there. if I said a quote here calls it a muscular and accomplished work of kinetic cinema built around two tremendous acting performances? Wow! Did you did, was muscular the word? Muscular was one of the words used to describe it. Yes, muscular <laughs> and accomplished. Uh, okay, around two brilliant acting performances. Um. Oh, is it? Oh, oh. <laughs> is the oh, interestingly the, if this is what I think it might be? I almost asked a question that would have given it to me earlier, but I'm not. But are the is is the main character from where I'm from? What fate wise? Yes, yes. I, well, I don't know. Okay, is he? <laughs> What are his feelings on apples? That's my question here. <laughs> no, it isn't. It isn't. Okay, it isn't. it's not that one. Okay. It isn't good for hunting, no. All right. Because I was like, I was earlier going <laughs> to ask, uh, is Robin Williams in it? That was my question. Okay. Um. All right. So. Uh, three to go. Three to go. I only, I thought I had four. Okay. Um, okay. I'll give you that one back then. <laughs> I think it took me a really long time to come up with that mm. question. <laughs> Um, okay, so it's not that. Two two performances uh make you cheer muscular is yeah. an interesting term to be using here. Okay. Would uh, the AV club called it meticulously precise and thrillingly volatile. Volatile. Yeah. Man oh man. Is the Oh boy. Is there a mentorship situation in this? Yes, there is. Okay. Oh god. Um oh, is so the 
mentor American. Yes. Okay. Mm. <laughs> Here come the balloons. <laughs> oh no, don't celebrate now. I'm not getting it. It's a mentorship situation in a movie that could be described as muscular and the acting performances yeah. are uh are powerhouse. It is not comedy action. Billions of our listeners horror. are shouting at, at the, at the <laughs> Do you right think? Now. Is it, is it yeah. like with these be, clues? Are you on the edge of it? I would have got it on the edge of it. Um is it uh and it wasn't made in the 80s and oh man uh okay is the central character an adult uh the central character is someone on the cusp of adulthood okay you would have watched a long time ago it's my last last thing is this movie um movie with a mentor, someone on the cusp of adulthood, that's gonna be house American? Yeah. Uh, it's all there. It's all <laughs> to describe the movie. Oh man. I I I don't I don't know. Give okay. and, and before uh, I give up, just give me like a hint that will lead me there so I can at least have the satisfaction of guessing. Okay. Uh, there are some more quotes on the movie poster. <laughs> um, AV Club calls it as thrillingly, as meticulously precise and thrillingly volatile as the music it celebrates. The music it celebrates? Mm. What What year? Like, how recent are we talking? Is it the 90s? 2014, I want to say. Oh, I was thinking like a lot older than this, which is probably part of it. It is too. The music yes. it celebrates. Music, someone yep. on the cusp of. I don't. Give me another. Uh, mm, the music is the one, really. I have no Kids idea. Kids studying music doesn't it doesn't ring any bells. okay i don't know why you ever would have but uh you failed to guess whiplash you know what's really funny what we screened that at ucsb when it came out i have a picture with damien chazelle and a signed script shut from it. up you do not you do <laughs> I not do. i do have that well 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 <laughs> it's so funny uh but i just sort of forgot about it Planted it out. What a great movie. <laughs> it was stressful. That was a... Yes, maybe that's super part of stressful. it. I just blocked it out. Mostly, though, I think I was... Most of those questions, I was... I, it wasn't until the end that I asked if it was an adult, and I had been thinking the whole time of an adult, like a like grown-up, grown-up. Uh, yeah, and yeah, yeah, I was yeah, thinking yeah, yeah, that yeah, this yeah. was probably like 90s, so I had thrown myself yeah. off with my own assumptions, but I didn't want to waste yes. any questions. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Interesting. Okay, you so you go. watched Whiplash. Yeah, it is. Um, and what a, you know, what a what's the word? What a serendipitous fucking bit of doom scrolling that was. Oh. Yeah, I watched fucking Whiplash again. Story, you know, upon release, and just every every single quote on that poster is true. <laughs> it is both muscular and meticulous. The performances are superb. The dialogue, fuck, fuck. It is excoriating. It's got just. Mm. the fucking malice and casual kind of cruelty in, in a lot of the dialogue in this film is just wonderful to behold. Uh, you see hints of the fucking tough love in this mentorship relationship. Actually, hang on, is he doing the right thing? Is he bringing this right. kid into his own? Is he actually fucking making him what he, he dreams of being? Or is he just day by day, brick by brick, disassembling this kid from the fucking psyche outward? Oh, it's wild. Love it. Great movie. Amazing. Yeah, I haven't seen it since that screening. Uh, I remember liking it at the time, but feeling it was too stressful mm. for a rewatch. So, mm. <laughs> uh, I yeah, things with like you know, yeah, authority figures like that is lots like of a, close quarters shouting. Yeah, yeah, it's like all the all of my like stressors in one movie, yeah, which yeah, is yeah. you all know well done. 
you know mm. but yeah you're, you're putting all the triggers in one place it's a, a little much for me friends you get me next what's your secret movie Ooh, yeah this is next week secret movie at least i mean at least you were getting close uh, i was and you're it, right I there think, i'm sure that. because i was that close people were absolutely yeah. yelling once i got to, like I is there a mentor i think people were probably yeah. like ah i think i i could make it to question 18 and still be like uh, does it have a dog is there a dog in it <laughs> Uh, what about a cat? I could not get Robin Williams out of my head. So it was like once Goodwill Hunting was mm. out, and then I asked if there was a mentor. Then I was like, it's a dead poet society. No, it's like not everything has Robin Williams in it. Like, it's Aladdin. Just that often. Was it Aladdin? <laughs> Is it Patch Adams? <laughs> I don't know. Um, dear friends, listen, we we went in here and uh we're like, we're just gonna talk a little bit about the movies and whatnot. But this is what happens when you put best friends on a podcast. Yay! <laughs> You're my beef, Mark. My BFF. Yeah, man. And uh, yeah, man. We'll we can't shut up because we just talk forever. So hopefully you enjoyed all of the little twisty turnies that this took. Um, let us know your opinions on any of the flims we watched. If you watched anything good this week, since we're talking about movies, hey, give yeah. us some wrecks that you saw. Um, and did you, you guess know, Whiplash? Did you guess Whiplash? I really want to know. If you guessed Whiplash, uh, have you been scammed in weird ways? Do you know anything about the whereabouts of what's her name? Deborah fucking Turnbull. Deborah Tully. I think it was Tully. Deborah Tully. Tully. Cause she knows me. Was she knows t- No, Mark, it was definitely Tully. It was definitely Tully. It was Tully. It was definitely Tully. Are you fucking with Mark? Are you Deborah Tully? Please. Are you Deborah Tully? Let us know. Uh, and I'd love to week, know what the fuck that was all about. Yeah, but stay one thing. friends. Mwah. Yeah. Mwah. <laughs> amazing i love that we just went with it and never hit record incredible <laughs>